Hi, I'm Deborah Atkinson and you're watching Flipping 50 TV, the place to be to reset, tune up and prepare for your second and better half with the vitality and the energy that we all want. And in every episode, I share how to move, what to eat and small daily flips that you can make so that you can get the most results in the least amount of time. And I'd love to answer your question. Send it to me at flipping50tv.com. If I can choose your, your question for the show, you'll get some juicy gifts. I'll tell you about at the end of today's episode. But even if I can't choose your question right away, you get muscles in minutes. It's my guide to over 20 exercises with over 40 illustrations about how to do it and how not to do it. Today's question is really from so many of you. What I'm doing today is talking about how to, how to do some of those exercises that actually hurt, don't feel good, make you not want to do them. And specifically, I'm talking about lunges and squats, either because of knees or maybe because of arthritic toes and how you can do some of these major metabolism boosters without the stress on those particular joints. Deborah, I can't do lunges because they hurt my knees. If I had a dime for every time I've heard that in 34 years, I would be a rich girl. But it may be true for you, and I just wanna help you make sure that that's the case. Because lunges are one of my absolute favorite exercises, and they can help you with mobility as much as they can help you with strength. And they can also help with balance and inner and I in inner and outer thigh tone, which so many women want. So what I want you to do is just kind of follow along. Watch if you're really thinking I'm vulnerable or you're really thinking, no, I absolutely know I can't do those. I'm totally with you. But I want to give you some safety tips because a lot of times it's because you haven't been told the right cues in the right moment to know where your weight should be and where it should not be. So let's just try this together, okay? So first of all, let's do some traditional, I want you to see my side view so you can actually see the alignment of my knees, which is the really important part. And a lot of times the risk of injury is so much greater when you're doing forward lunges, either walking across the room or you're doing them forward and back. And I want to tell you something, I never do forward lunges unless I'm walking across the room doing walking lunges in my own workout because, and that's been true for about 25 years, because I don't see the reason to do them. Here's the much safer way to do them. You're actually gonna stand where your knees are supported over your heels. And if you're comfortable right now, there's a way potentially for you to stay comfortable while you're doing your lunge. What you're gonna do is step way back. So you wanna step back, so look at my knee. It's in the exact same position I was standing. So there shouldn't be any pressure on my knee. And if I've stepped back far enough that the weight is on my heel, then I should be okay. And the weight now is opening up my hip flexor. It's in the bum over here and in my quadricep a little bit. And then as I step forward and change legs, the same thing happens. So you can remember it this way. You wanna make sure the knee stays put, doesn't go forward, and if anything, it comes back a little bit. That should feel much more protected. If you're not used to doing it that way, you may want a chair right here. And just use the back of that chair in order to help yourself balance and get used to it. So check, make sure you've got space behind you and try that. Now, if that felt okay, but you feel vulnerable, you don't have great balance, so maybe you haven't been doing lunges, you can do it in a static lunge or what we call a stationary lunge. You can set yourself up in a great position and then instead of moving in and out of it, you're simply gonna move up and down. Now, this one's really important because I'll see a lot of people do this and the error they make is they go forward instead of going straight down and lifting. So I want you to think about dropping the tailbone down and lifting the crown of your head up. So it's just a lift and a lower in this position. Try putting your hands on your hips so you've got them there just for balance or hand on a chair or wall if you need it, okay? 
stationary and I'm going to show you on the other side just for kicks and giggles okay so important that you are stepping forward opening up and then lift up and think crown of your head is up tailbone is down and all you're doing is dropping this way no movement this way hands on your hips and it's lower and lift and I want you to think about pushing through that front heel so do a couple more with me and push through the back ball of your foot. And if you're out there and you've got arthritis in your feet and this one is no, you can do it. I've got you covered, don't go away. I'm thinking about you, okay? And lift, last time, and up. Nice job. Okay, so that is rear lunges. And you can just wipe forward lunges out of your entire repertoire. There's no need to do that. And get all of the advantages with none of the disadvantages with a rear lunge. So I just alternated sides. When you progress, you'll see me in the whole flip or muscles in minutes videos, do them all on one side. So it's a little bit more fatiguing for the one side glute, all right? Which is the whole idea. Okay, now those of you that have issues with your foot and you can't flex at your toes, because of either you've had surgery, you're fused, or you've got arthritis and that really bothers you. What I'm gonna have you do is side lunges. Another way for you to actually use those inner thighs, use the quadriceps and the glutes, but look at my feet, they're both staying flat, okay? So as I bring that back in, what I want you to know is right now you should have a stretch through the inner thigh. So if you just get in this position with me, and then you're gonna push and there should be weight on this heel, which means there's weight in the glutes and not in the knee, okay? Push back to that standing position. And I'm gonna keep a couple over here for right now. When you do them, I'd like you to do them alternating sides, right and left, hands on your hips. But when you sit out, make sure you're not going forward because then you will say, I feel that in my knee. So if you're feeling it in your knee, try to sit yourself back and weights on your heel and in your bum and in. One more time, sit back and power in. And sit back and that's it. Let's try the other side with me. And sit and you may have to focus a little more on one side than you did on the other because your hips may not feel exactly the same. That's to be expected. And sit and lift. So how do you work that? Just working back and forth can actually feel like it's a little cardio. You could wear a weighted vest, as long as you don't get pulled forward, or you could hold a weight at your chest in order to make that a little bit more weighted and really reach fatigue. So side lunges are a great way to go if you have to maintain flat feet. What I would rather you did not do is try to step back into a flat foot and do a rear lunge because we're really missing the point. We can't open up the hip flexor when we do that, and we're probably risking injury more than we're doing good. That was your lunge, okay? Let's talk a little bit about squats because that's the second most common exercise. Someone will say, I can't do squats because they bother me. And to you out there, if you've got bone on bone, you've been told you don't have any cartilage in those knees anymore or in that knee, and you know who you are. I'm not talking to you because I can't fix that, right? Unless you're gonna look at knee replacement, you're probably gonna be struggling with that for a little while. And do know this. So if you have some issues and you've got no cartilage in one leg, a lot of times what will happen is the body will compensate. So if you find that you're limping, but you don't even realize it anymore. You know, you might wanna weigh the odds of getting some support and figuring out what's your next option so that you don't have a domino effect that ends up not, not only bothering your other knee, but your other hip, your other ankle, the other whole side of that back that's trying to take up the slack for that injured body part. Okay, so let's talk squats. First of all, if you think you can't do them, you are doing them. If you squat at all during the day to use a restroom, or you sit and stand to eat or to work, that's a squat, essentially. So I'm gonna check in with you and say, does that hurt you? And if it does, let's try to get you to do it a little bit differently. But also, 
if it doesn't, you're doing that okay, it may be when you go to do the exercise that you change your form and you're not quite doing the same thing. So I want you to stand. Just stand up, think about where your weight is in your feet. And what I want you to do is try to shift to the balls of your feet, almost taking your heels off the ground. So you may not be able to see that I'm doing it, but my shoe, my heel just got a little bit lighter. And when I'm doing that, it's almost like I'm falling forward if I let myself. Now I'm gonna rock back and I'm right over the ball of my feet and my heels, smack in the middle. That's where we typically should live. But when we do a squat, where I want you is back with your weight on your heels. So that's really important to think about it because a lot of us aren't used to doing that. And when you do it correctly the first few times, it could make you feel like you're way out of balance. So just expect that's coming. Put your weight on your heels. Feet about hip width apart, don't go incredibly wide. And I want you just to start coming down and then stop right there. So if I look down, I can still see my toes really well. If you can't, your knees potentially have done this and gone forward. So I want you to really sit back, wait on your heels. And as you keep coming down, you should still be able to see your toes. Although that's not what you wanna be looking at most of the time and then come up and push your heels into the ground. When you connect your heels pushing into the floor, you connect with your glutes. And the squat is about your glutes. If you feel a squat working your quadriceps so much more, there's a good chance you're in the balls of your feet doing a lean forward. If you imagine this, and you would never wanna do this because there's not a place for your nose to go, but imagine you were doing a squat against a wall. If your toes are against the wall, your knees can't go any more forward than that, or you're gonna be in trouble, right? And then come up. So for some of you, you're doing this right now, and you get here and you're still in pain-free range of motion, and maybe suddenly you get to pain, right? What I want you to do is find that pain-free range of motion, and that is the place where you're gonna live, in your squat. So rather than try to do them deep, do them the way you can safely. And what will happen if you do them in that pain-free range of motion and maybe get used to holding at the bottom just a few seconds? You're gonna gain some strength and gradually you may be able to find you strengthen the muscles that support your knee and you can go deeper, all right? So I did shoulder width apart those first few times. You can also go much more narrow. That changes the work. You're gonna focus a little bit more around the corner of your hip and inside and outside. If you go wide, my personal preference, toes make sure they're turned out only as far as your hip and your knee can follow. So your knees need to be on the same party line as your toes are, but you're working here, your inner thighs, your adductors a little bit more as you come down and out. It's kind of like a ballet pose. It's actually called a plie squat. So that's your how to do squats and do lunges safely, more effectively for your knees and potentially for your feet. Let me know if that was helpful because I love to hear from you. So in this episode, I want to thank all of you for sharing with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter what your biggest concerns are. And that is the place to find me. On Facebook, it's Flipping 50 or Flipping 50 TV. We'll get you there with the URL. And likewise, on Instagram, follow me at Flipping 50 TV. Thanks so much, but send me your specific question at flipping50tv.com. And if I choose that question for the next episode, I'll send you a trio of full-size products from my friends at Anne Marie Skincare and exclusive access to the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women online course, plus You Still Got a Girl, the book. What are you waiting for? Head on over to flipping50tv.com, send me your question, and let's start Flipping 50 together.